For example, let's consider this existing project of a building management generated using the application architect. The symbols have been instantiated in the different mimics, and they use variables created with the application architect, such as command and status for the light. As you can see, similar branch structures have been generated as the instances of different models are defined in the application architect. We will show more of this later. The customer needs more functionalities. He'd like to be able to control the lights not only with a switch, but also with a dimmer. Plus, he'd like to display an alarm after a certain time of use for the light and then record this time. The first step consists of changing the symbol of a light. Switch in design mode and open the graphic explorer. Click on a symbol. In this one, for example, you can access it from the list within the graphic explorer which is a very handy tool to access the properties of any objects inside the Mimic and to be able to change the properties of any symbol. It's even possible to add animations from here. In this symbol, we have a rectangle on which we add an animation to open a pop-up. We select an existing Mimic in the building library containing a dimmer. This pop-up will be open from a generic symbol and we will use the star character to open the pop-up using the branch of the symbol. And the first modification is done. As you can see in Run Mode, if you click on a light, the pop-up appears. At this stage, the animations are not connected because the variables don't yet exist, and we'll use the application architect to generate the variables to be connected. The second modification to meet the new constraints is to add an animation to display an alarm. For example, we'll do this with an animation color on alarm. The variable will be called working time high and will be generated with the application explorer as we will see. And that's it. We've changed the symbol to meet the new constraints and to animate the new variables that the application architect will generate. The second step consists in working on object models to generate the elements of the configuration used for the new functionalities. And it's exactly what the application architect was designed for. Open the Application Architect from the menu Configure. The left pane is used to display and select existing templates and parameters. The right pane is used to configure the templates, instances, or parameters as we'll show you. This project already contains templates of objects within the library building, organized in different categories, and defining different elements to be generated. We have devices for light and temperature. The light model defines two variables in the configuration element section. We'll see that this section can also be used to define behaviors such as thresholds, trends, cyclics, and event actions, expressions, and so on. In the graphic element section, an associated symbol is defined for the light. It's a link to an existing symbol in the library, and the HVAC model defines four variables, two bits and two registers, as well as an associated symbol. We also have different models of rooms, defining the different types of rooms for the building. For example, we assume that a meeting room contains two lights and one HVAC device. And as you can see, a template can include other templates which is very handy. No need to recreate our devices. Using the included templates, we can then structure the templates in a modular manner with a different set of lights and the HVAC for the rooms. Each template of a room also has an associated symbol specific to that room. Within the structures, a building model is defined with an associated link to a mimic to generate the building screen and a template for the floors with an associated mimic to generate the floor screens and associated symbol, which is the floor button.
All these templates have been used to instantiate the different part of our building and generate the associated configuration variables and mimics in the project. We are now going to modify the templates to meet the new functionalities and synchronize the configuration. First, we'd like to control the light with a dimmer, and for that we need to modify the light template and add a register variable to be controlled. We right-click on the configuration element, and then, for example, we add the register control. The properties for the variable are displayed here. We set the variable as a command, and in our demo, the variables are connected to an OPC source as defined here in our template with the server and group associated. The item ID will change depending on the building and floor and obviously instead of using a static name it would be much more powerful to be able to set a dynamic name which could be generated depending on the branch of the variable to be created for example. To do so we can select a parameter from the list of parameters defined for the project and this parameter has been defined here in the parameter section as shown. The variable to control the light is now ready. And the second constraint is to display an alarm after a period of use for the light. We create another register variable to get the time of use that we will call working time. We add to this variable a chronometer behavior with a period of one second. We also need to define a triggering bit, and once again it would be great to dynamically create the name for this variable. To do so, we can define the name with an expression that we create using the expression editor as shown. The control space shortcut allows us to select different functions like the name of the template and the full branch. As you can see, expressions are a good way to customize properties. The chronometer is now ready, and the last step to define a threshold to trigger an alarm. We added a threshold system to our working time variable, and we can activate a high threshold with a value of 10 as shown. The associated variable must be defined as an alarm, and the customer also needs to record the time of use for the light. If you right-click on the variable working time, you can add the variables as a trend to be archived in a proprietary format, for example, in an existing archive unit as shown. And that's it. Our model light now is ready. All the modifications we have done will be applied to the project on the next generation. Now let's take a look at what we're going to generate. The instance and section contains elements generated from the templates. We already have instances for a building with three floors here, and it's possible to add a new instance, for example, a terrace. We select a new instance from the template floor, and we call it terrace. This terrace will contain one room, which will be a meeting room, but a special one, a solarium. And as a solarium, it doesn't need lights, so from the predefined template, we can unselect the light models for this instance. And then from this model, only the elements from the HVAC template will generate. And this is a perfect example of customization the application architect allows to offer a full flexibility. It is also possible to delete some existing instances. For example, the meeting room and the open space of the floor will no longer exist in the building. And as you will see, it will automatically be removed from the configuration and the mimics. Modifications are done, and we can now generate the new configuration. From the menu tasks, open the generation dialog box, and from here you can set different options for the generation process. Check the consistency of the configuration to be generated before the generation, and generate graphical elements, and in some cases you may not need to generate graphics. For this you will untick this option. Two types of synchronization are possible, 
Again, the fast synchronization updates only the properties that have changed, and the full synchronization generates all the configuration and overwrites the existing one. We select the full synchronization and validate. And that's it. Our configuration is now generated. From the Application Explorer, we can check the new configuration of variables. We can see that the terrace has been created with the Solarium and the HVAC system. Also, Floor 1 contains offices only now, and the lights contain the new variables that we needed to control the dimmer with the behaviors defined within the application architect. Not only variables have been generated and modified, but also the mimics. We open the main mimic, and a new button here for the terrace has been created. For example, you can now drag it here, switch it to run mode, and open the new mimic created for the terrace. As you can see, the application architect has instantiated the symbols for our solarium, a meeting room, and the HVAC, as defined in our model. Now we just need to drag our symbols and save our mimic. Let's check floor one. The mimic has been updated. The open space in the meeting room have been removed. We can check that the pop-up for a light is now animated with the new variables created and that we control the light with the dimmer. Wait for a few seconds and an alarm appears on the light. Our project has been successfully updated with the application architect. And thank you for joining PCView Solutions Tutorials.